Hello YouTube, this is Les. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show and run the latest Sterling engine that I've completed. I actually started building this uh, many years ago. I can't remember, I'm guessing maybe 15 to 20 years ago. Um, and it never would run. This is the way it originally looked. It was built with a uh, brass cool end made out of free cutting brass and it had a stainless steel uh, hot end with a lightweight brass displacer and the power piston was mounted uh, on the side of the uh, cool end of the displacer cylinder. And as I stated, the engine would never run uh, because it didn't produce enough power to overcome all the friction of the heavy parts. So I got the bug to try to uh, fix it and get it to run. And this is uh, what I ended up with. These are the parts that were removed. Heavy crankshaft, 930 seconds inch uh, drive shaft with a double crank 90 degrees apart uh, as needed for a Stirling engine of this design. The connecting rods uh, made out of a split end design uh, with a brass big end and uh, steel connecting rods. And there, as I stated, I believe there was just too much friction uh, for the, the little engine to overcome. So the engine was rebuilt using uh, much lighter crank pins and crankshafts made from 1 16th inch diameter drill rod. And uh, I also replaced the connecting rods, obviously, so they have small pin uh, connections on um, tandem cranks that are uh, connected by spur gears. And as a result, I was able to uh, eliminate a lot of the friction. And the engine will run now. Uh, and it, it doesn't run too bad, but it uh, takes quite a lot of heat to get it to run. So this is Kind of a large burner. I was, I was hoping I could have gotten by with a, a smaller burner. Because at, with this amount of heat, the engine uh, overheats and you have to shut it down after a period of time. But having separate tandem cranks, I was able to uh, have a larger stroke for the displacer so that the displacer travels the full length all the way from very close to the end of the, the hot displacer tube to the very end of the cool end uh, on this side. And I was able to make a smaller um, stroke for the power piston because uh, similar to the other engine that I built, I found that the, the volume of air that is produced in the cycling um, of, the, uh, of the displacer, uh, the volume wasn't quite enough to carry the power piston through a complete stroke. So I shortened that up so that more closely fits that uh, volume of air produced. So I'll show you how it works now. Uh, I've got to put some fuel in it.
This is when I'm using denatured alcohol. The previous Sterling engine would heat up very quickly with the glass displacer cylinder. Uh, this one with the stainless steel displacer cylinder uh, takes more time to heat up. As you can see, it's starting to slow down uh, because of the uh, the temperature of the of the engine getting too hot. I'll show you what happens if I cool the cool end down a little bit with some water. causes it to speed up again. So anyway, it was kind of fun to build it and finally get the Sterling engine to work.
Here's my, my previous Sterling engine for size comparison.